Time to turn our attention to the draft. Who better to do that with, than with ESPN senior draft analyst Mel Kuyper Jr. And as a reminder of Mel's top five quarterbacks in this year's draft, it starts right there with Bryce Young, followed by Will Levis. He's got Will Levis at two, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Hinden Hooker. Mel, though, not the only draft insider we have today. How about Daniel Jeremiah from the NFL Network is here with us in the mix for the next hour. So glad to have DJ here. You can catch him, of course, as a part of the draft coverage over on NFL Network. Network one week from today. Uh, welcome, Daniel. We're so glad to have you on the show. And this is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to put you right to work, though, okay? We saw Mel's ranking there. He's got Levis as the number two overall QB in this class. What do you got on that? Well, I, I love it. I love it because Mel is always going to stick to his guns and do his own work and his own evaluation. I, I think the evaluations of the quarterbacks in this class are all over the map when you go around the league. You know, for me, I look at these guys almost in tiers. And for me, it's Bryce Young is in a tier all by himself. There's a little bit of a gap. You get to C.J. Stroud as number two for me. And then really you can kind of couple together Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. And I, I have Anthony Richardson over him. I think Will Levis is further along in his journey. But I think with Anthony Richardson, uh, there's just a bigger upside of what he can ultimately be. But I feel like you have to you have to remind people, I still like Will Levis. He's a good player. He's rugged. He's tough. He can drive the football. Obviously, the health issues this year had a big impact on his play. But for me, he'd be number four. Yeah, DJ, I think going into the year, I had him really number one A, basically. And I had that uh, rating that high because of Liam Cohen and what he did with him in 2021. And the fact he had Luke Fortner at center, Darian Kennard at tackle, he had Wandale Robinson, he had Rodriguez, he had everything going on, and he was able to have a heck of a year. And then this year, you take away the coordinator, new system, take away all those great players around him, and you factor in the significant injuries that he had when he was beat up behind that porous offensive line and trying to compete each week. He did turn the ball over. That old Miss game bothered me, but that's the competitive drive in him. Like we saw with Josh Allen. We see that even now with Josh. We see it with Daniel Jones. They've kind of corrected that issue. So I really, I and McShay always gets on me, DJ, about throwing out this year. <laughs> it really is a case where if you want to factor it in, you're not going to like them. But I loved him in 2021. He had eight rushing touchdowns. You think about well, nine rushing touchdowns in 2021. Zero over the last eight games this year because he couldn't move. He had miles in front of him, DJ. He couldn't run because he had no, no legs to, to move. So he just gutted it out, did the best he could. And people are hating on him. I get it. But I liked what I saw in 2021 a lot. Yeah, if you ask Kentucky, they're like, man, this guy grinded it out for us despite the pain, despite the issues we had. It, Dan, why is it so hard to evaluate Levis, though? It's a little bit like Justin Herbert at Oregon, candidly, because you, you watch the, the talent by the individual, and it's really impressive. And then to Mel and DJ's point, the tape just doesn't match it. And you sit there and go, it's hard to figure out why he did some of the things that he did, why he made some of those decisions, why he had certain moments yeah. of pocket feel, because you go watch this offensive line, and you go, they're not protecting them. You watch the, the, the receivers try to get open. He's holding on to the football. No one's open. So it, I think it's very difficult. And Mel and DJ have been doing this a lot longer than I have. Is you try to watch the tape and separate the end result from the process okay. and separate yeah. kind of how the play ends from watching the performer. And I just think it's a very difficult thing to do. And it's a, very similar to what we saw with Justin Herbert because you're going, I see the talent, yeah. but the tape doesn't match that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Herbert because I thought he was a first rounder. I did not think he would be as good as he is. And I think about why a lot, like what did I miss? And as right. you just laid out, the number one thing I didn't do or I failed to do was properly evaluate the context around Herbert. Um, I looked back at my notes this morning and there actually are a lot of similarities with Levis, cannon for arm, yeah. some issues with decision making, accuracy, athleticism. I think one difference is the scheme at Oregon, I felt, held back Herbert, whereas Levis plays in about as close to an NFL offense uh, both this year and the previous sure. year, as you'll see amongst any of these prospects. Um, but I think that the question that teams have to ask and that, you know, maybe like I didn't ask with Justin Herbert is weighing all of those factors against each other. How much do the issues with protection and the lack of receiving talent can you attribute? You talked about this the decision-making, too. 
because it's not entirely yeah. because of the receivers that he's throwing some of those picks. And it's a really, really tough eval, but it's something that teams are going to have to do right now. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad, Mina, that you brought up the experience with NFL offensive schemes, which Levis has had for the past couple of years. We would think that would be a plus, but it, it is something to look at with some of these teams wondering how would he translate potentially immediately into their offense. One team that we did think would be in the QB market at number two overall is the Houston Texans as Adam Schefter jumps back in here. And Shefty, you blew all of our minds on Monday when you said it might not be a quarterback going to Houston there. What's the latest on that number two pick? Well, this seems to be a point of inflection in the draft because the widespread assumption all along has been that the Houston Texans would go quarterback at number two with the quarterback that the Carolina Panthers bypassed at number one. But I think there's a feeling around the league that seems to be gathering some momentum that there's a real possibility that the Houston Texans will wind up passing on a quarterback at two. Doesn't mean they will. C.J. Stroud is a compelling player and a very interesting pick, and they have to address the quarterback at some point in time. But there's a real question around the league when you talk to people out there about whether they will, in fact, go quarterback or whether with a new defensive-minded head coach, they'll go take their top-rated defensive player at that point in the draft. We'll see how that goes, but there's all of a sudden a lot of intrigue surrounding the Houston Texans, which many people thought would be a quarterback. But to me, look, when you, you look at this situation, there are whispers about this. You heard the whispers for a while, and I wasn't buying into it. I'm like, they have to take a quarterback. There's no way. They're picking up there at two. You can't run into next year with what you have at the position right now. So yeah. I wasn't buying it. But then these whispers, all of a sudden now, this is like a roar. This is coming from all over the place when you talk to folks around the league that they might not take a quarterback. My only my only contention is, is right now, if you don't take one, you better get one with 12. You better come back up and get one. You can't run it back with what you have right now at that position. Mm. I believe this, and I don't understand it. I mean yeah. – Logically, like you can, you can make a case for it, right? Which is okay. We, they love Will Anderson, or even Daniel. You know, maybe they're considering not taking quarterback this year um, and waiting until next year for Drake May or Caleb Williams and running it back with Davis Mills. And you know they're coming from the Niners, where they built the team and it's so strong roster-wise. But to me, first of all, if you don't take a quarterback there, there's a good chance, a very likely chance, that your division rival, the Indianapolis Colts gets quarterback two. Yeah. That is quite the roll of a dice because Ooh. you are passing not just one, but you know three options now, one of whom might terrorize you in your own division mm -hmm. for years. And we're all making an assumption point. that they can get one of those quarterbacks next year. And, and DJ, as far as like waiting to take one, I, I, my feeling is if you have enough conviction to take a quarterback in the first round, you should have enough conviction to take him with pick two because that's still an incredibly valuable draft pick. So. All of this about the Houston Texans, I believe it. There is so much noise around it, but it would not be my choice if I was running that team. You guys know where I stand. I would take Richardson at two if I was Houston. I have a question. It's probably going to be for DJ Mel. Number one, if it's not C.J. Stroud, because that's where a lot of people have linked. If it's not C.J. Stroud, why? Have you guys heard anything potentially on why not C.J. at two? And then if they pass on quarterback and they're taking a defensive end, and this is the San Francisco you know, staff, D'Amico Ryans, is there a Nick Bosa in this draft when it comes to Wilson and or Will Anderson? I, I don't think there is, Dan. I think that you look at Tyree Wilson's a good player. He's really long. He's got some bursts coming off the edge. I prefer Will Anderson, again, a really good player. There's not a Nick Bosa in this class. There's not a Miles Garrett. There's not a Vaughn Miller. So, to me, that's why I look at the quarterback position. And I, I know you said you would take Richardson. I would take C.J. Stroud with that pick. Um, so to me, the reason why it wouldn't happen would be simply they don't feel that's the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to try and, and grab a guy just because you just feel like you have to take a quarterback if you don't feel like he fits. My thing would be just pick one. Pick a quarterback, whichever yeah. one's your guy, and take him at two. This is your opportunity. There's no guarantee you're going to be here again. you got to get your guy. Yeah, to DJ's point of this whisper about this number two pick becoming a roar, over the last two days, Will Anderson Jr. and Will Levis have been flipping back and forth as the favorite for the number two overall pick, according to the odds makers. I don't know. Vegas is listening to that roar, too. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.